Hi everybody, I'm Luis Serrano. I am the head of curriculum of the School of Artificial Intelligence here at Udacity. And today we're uh, very happy to have Rafaelo D'Andrea joining us. He is one of the pioneers and one of the leaders in the field of uh, flying cars. And uh, we're very lucky that he is uh, one of the leaders of this uh, nano degree as well. Thanks for having me. Well, let, let me ask you a first question that, that's been puzzling me. In, in, in machine learning and AI, we always have, you know, we cherish the error, right? We, we say we learn from, from errors and, and data is, you know, positive, negative. But I'm, I'm guessing in, in the field of flight, like an error means something very different than, than in, in other models. So how do, you, how do you deal with this? How do you manage to learn from errors, but at the same time try to really not have them? That's correct. So this is where one of the, you know, this came up in earlier discussions is how do flying cars differ from autonomous cars? Mm -hmm. And that's, you need a certain level of reliability and robustness just to get this thing to hover, of right? Course, yeah. And, um, you know, we talked about the uh, co-evolving simulation environments with the physical environment so that mm -hmm. you can do a lot of your development in simulation uh, so that you have pretty good guarantees that when you try it on the real system that it's actually going to work. So you can still learn from errors if you have um, your simulation environment is of good enough fidelity relative to your to your yeah. uh, to your physical environment. For example, I think that the you know in the in the short to medium term, uh, some of the big impacts in machine learning uh, are going to be for uh, preventive preventive maintenance and diagnostics. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, monitoring all of this data, all of the sensor data. Um, that is being generated by, by these vehicles and figuring out, hmm, I'm going to have a motor failure soon, right? Mm -hmm. Because I have all of this data that are collected in the right. past and, and I can correlate that to this vehicle you know, performing a, 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 some sort of emergency maneuver because that had a failure uh, and bringing to bear these techniques to tell me ahead of time that that's going to happen. I, th I think that's, okay. that's going to have a, a, a significant impact. And in terms of data, do you have, uh, is there any data you can use from, from before or do you generate it all as you, as you make the model? Well, so I think that, uh, I, I mean, of course, you always use data to, um, uh, you know, when we, when we do research on flying machines, you know, we, we use data for many things. We use it for refining our simulation model. Mm -hmm. We use it for system identification, for coming up with yeah. uh, new mo uh, physical models of the vehicles, yeah. uh, aerodynamic coefficients, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we also um, use it for uh, on, uh, online adaptation and learning. You know, you want to do uh, a very ag uh, aggressive maneuver, right? You try it, it doesn't work out. Um, you know, you can use various uh, design methodologies to, um, you know, to take the, the difference between what you wanted to do and what you actually did and use that error to modify the behavior of your vehicle so that next time it does it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to do that, you need a layer underneath that takes care of the stability aspects of it. For the reason right. that you said earlier, uh -huh. right? You don't want to rely on, uh, you don't want to have errors there because then the thing will, scra exactly. will crash. Yeah, exactly. So the, it's about architecting your system so that you do give the chance for the system to learn and adapt, but you do it in a safe way, mm -hmm. right? So that um, you can build um, uh, basic layers that allow this flying object to recover no matter what situation it oh, finds I itself see. in. So you capture and, the and error but not necessarily and break the thing. Right, <laughs> and then, then you can free to experiment on top of that once okay. you have that because if things go wrong, uh -huh. you know you have a, f you know, a fail safe that can at least cap make this thing recover, uh -huh. right? So, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's really about, about building a, a basic layer of safety and reliability and building on top of that. So for our students who have, uh, who are in the process of learning, you know, AI, autonomous systems, machine learning, any, any words of advice that you could give them if they, they want to get into flight? So I think what's neat is, you know, to take that expertise that you have uh, and, you know, as you learn about, you know, the physics of flight and basic algorithms to make things mm -hmm. fly, try some of the things that you've learned in yeah. your other courses and see how well they work. You know, you may find that they don't work very well at all, or you may find that they work really well, right? And now you have a unique insight into this, into this industry that maybe no one's had before. Uh -huh. um, and you could also learn that there's some really cool things that, that are done in this way that actually 
are better than things that you've been doing before, right? Mm -hmm. And then you don't wanna be dogmatic. You don't wanna say, well, everything is a reinforcement learning problem or right. everything is an AI problem. No, you learn that for certain things, AI makes sense. For other things, model-based design makes sense. Um, you know, for some things, black box models are good. For other things, you wanna have, you know, uh, very good insights into, into how these things are working. Um, you know, it's, there is, you wanna avoid dogma. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you very much. I've learned a lot and hope our students have, a, have also. Mm -hmm.